Hello everyone, I'm so excited to join you all in this live segment, Getting to Know Ayurveda. This is in collaboration with Cure Joy. My name is Akshata Shilvant and I live in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm an Ayurvedic lifestyle consultant and founder of jivalifestyle.com. I'm really excited to be with you all. Please share in the comment section where you all are and where you all are joining from. This is going to be an informal session so please post your questions, comments as we go along. I would like to keep this very informal and informative. So again, thank you for joining the segment of Get to Know Ayurveda. I'm seeing another question come up, like how Ayurveda impacted my own personal life. I think that's an excellent question. Thank you for asking that. Um, it's again an interesting story, just like my dad. Ayurveda really personally impacted me is when I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism, when I lost both my parents. I lost them in a very short span of two years. Uh, in 2004, my mom passed away, and then 2006, my dad passed away. So it was a very short period in between, and being an only child, I think it took a toll on my health, and I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. And I went and when I went to the doctor, they, as typical medical mainstream doctors, said they would put me on steroids or hormones to balance the thyroid gland. I was very reluctant uh, to do that. First of all, I never believed in steroids and hormones. So somehow I assured the doctor that please give me two years uh, of time and I would like to try to regulate it or reverse it with an Ayurvedic lifestyle, which I totally believed all my life. So from then on, I really um, seriously uh, followed an Ayurvedic lifestyle, uh, eating, crafting recipes that are specifically good for hypothyroidism. There are certain vegetables, certain spices, that I crafted my own recipes because having the knowledge of Ayurveda, it really helped me to put it in practice what the dishes sh I should eat to my body type, and I'm a Pitta Kapha uh, body constitution, and on top of that, how to balance the hypothyroidism, which is a, it's typically an imbalance of Kapha dosha. So it took me about year, year and a half to really bring the numbers to a normal range, but my doctor, when they took my blood report after two years, were really surprised to see that I almost um, in the medical terminology, it's safe to say regulated my hypothyroidism, then reversing it. But it happened all with Ayurvedic diet. There were no medicines, no hormones. So I think that resonated deeply with me, first with my dad being healed from arthritis and now with me with thyroid. So I feel it's my calling today, it's my innate passion to help people, especially with thyroid, and I do advanced workshops on how to regulate the thyroid gland with Ayurvedic lifestyle. So I'm glad you asked this question and I hope I answered it. If you have any questions, please feel free to keep writing in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them. The next question I see is what is Ayurvedic way of life and what is the body constitution or the dosha you just mentioned? Okay, that's a good question again. So what is an Ayurvedic way of life? So personally for me, I'll just share my own personal experience. Ayurvedic way of life, and I'm glad you asked it's a way of life. First, let me clarify that. It's definitely a way of life. It's a lifestyle. Let me put that straight out there. Following an Ayurvedic lifestyle, I like to call it, is not a diet or a fad. So it has to be a commitment to your life, throughout your life, I mean to say. So Ayurveda, what it is, is Ayur is life and Veda is knowledge. So Ayurveda is a systematic uh, knowledge of how to live a holistic life, or you can say it's a science or a wisdom to live life to your fullest. So it's a very lofty expectation Ayurveda puts to us, is that it gives you the wisdom to live the life the way you need it. The only thing it asks you is, you live it according to Ayurvedic principles. And when I mean Ayurvedic principles, I'll tell you what it is. 
in Ayurveda, the concept is this whole universe, our entire creation, was just made with five elements. And those five elements are earth, water, air, ether, fire. So these five elements, we see this creation to be so vast and complex, but it's made with just five elements. And these five elements that made this entire creation, those same five elements have made us. So there is that relationship between the environment and with us. The same five elements that dance and resonate in the creation dance and resonate within us. So what affects the environment affects us, and what affects us affects the environment. So it's a very mutual sharing relationship in Ayurveda. So that's the reason when we say live an Ayurvedic life, is basically focusing on the nature, focusing on the change of seasons. So just as we change our wardrobes to every season, especially in the US, we have a different wardrobe for fall, we have a different wardrobe for winter, summer, spring, but we hardly care. We also uh, even change our cars in the US. Like spring, we have like a uh, sports car with no rooftop. Everything is tailored to the season, but sad thing is we don't pay attention to the diet. Even the diet calls for a change in every season. And if we are in spring season, Ayurveda tells specific guidelines what to eat for spring, what to eat for summer, what to eat for winter. So Ayurvedic way of living is living with the nature according to your season, and more importantly is to your body type. That is the dosha, the second part of the question. So where I mentioned the five elements that created the creation and that created us, those five elements, the permutation and combination of these five elements make three body constitutions in Ayurveda, and those three constitutions are called as vata, pitta, and kapha. So the vata is made up of air and ether out of the five elements. The air and ether is the predominant one. The other three are passive, but all five elements exist in each dosha. The pitta, the fire element, is made up of fire and water, and the other three air elements are passive. And in kapha, it's earth and water, and the other three elements are passive. So that's how the permutation and combination of these five elements make our body constitution. And once you know your dosha, the body constitution, it's like knowing the model you are made up of. It's, I give an analogy in my workshops. It's like if you know, for me, I think this human body is an extremely sophisticated gadget. And I believe it is said by Sadhguru that human being is a sophisticated gadget, and I truly believe in it. So to give an analogy, if you take a luxury car, like a BMW or a Benz or any other luxury car, it asks for a specific requirement of gas or petrol for viewers in India. Gas is used in US. It asks for a premium grade. So even we as a human being have a sophisticated gadget it asks for the best quality food to be taken in, and we hardly pay attention to how to keep this. And when luxury cars require high um, premium gasoline to work the engine properly, just like that our human heart requires optimum high nutrition foods for us to work optimally. So it's, it's kind of, you know, we take care of our cars and our homes and our wardrobes and our other things in life, would we hardly pay attention to keeping this well-being of our body. So I think it's time we pay attention to this. So I see another question come up. What is an advice for someone new to follow an Ayurvedic lifestyle? So Ayurveda is a very embracing approach. It's, it's not like Phenetic, it's very, it's not like you have to be a Rotarian or a vegan. Every day we see something new coming up. The reason I have stuck to an Ayurvedic lifestyle is it's very, um, what I mean to say is it's all embracing and you do it to the best of your ability. And that really um, caught my attention. So if you are new to Ayurveda and you want to start this, start small, one thing at a time. It is very overwhelming if you read any Ayurveda books or any Ayurveda diet books especially. It's too vast and vague at the same time. And most of the people in the West have read many books of Ayurveda 
who have been really impressed with it, but don't know how to start with it. It's very abstract in nature, so they don't know the practical way of how to apply it in daily life. So what I suggest is start simple. So one thing is to get to know your body dosha, the constitution. I think it's the first step to do is to figure out what make you are. You know, are you a vata or a pitta or a kapha or are you a combination of the two doshas just like me, I'm a pitta kapha. Once you know your body constitution, your body type, then we can tailor the diet according to that constitution. I think that's the first step to know who you are in Ayurveda. And then slowly you will get food guidelines. Uh, there are different routines for different body types. It's just not the food you eat, it's the lifestyle you lead as well. So if you are just taking me as an example, as a pitta kapha, I have to follow a certain lifestyle to keep myself balanced. It's just not with the diet that I eat but right from what I get up in the morning to how I follow the day, it's called dinacharya, the daily routine, to the uh, time I retire and go to bed. So there are different aspects, but I would say first thing is to know your body type and start incorporating, maybe just change your breakfast dish to the body constitution you are. And then Take that for like two to three weeks and you'll already start seeing tangible results when you start tweaking your diet according to your body type. And then when you're ready, you can incorporate the lunch food according to your body type. So start slow, do, do it to the best of your ability. There is no competition. There is no like uh, deadline to meet. You go at your own pace, at your own um, will but you will see a tangible result. You will see things working for yourself and the cravings. And uh, I was a chocoholic in my life. I, ha I had to eat so many chocolates that it, it's really shameful to even say how much I used to eat every day. But thanks to my Ayurvedic lifestyle, I have overcome the chocolate addiction. At one time, chocolate was eating me, not the other way around. But if I can correct myself, reverse all the addictions, and now live an Ayurvedic lifestyle, I think anyone can do it. So you can start slow, start small. Um, if you have questions, please let me know. I also do workshops. I conduct one-on-one -on -one consultations. If you are interested in knowing, want to know more about Ayurveda and how to incorporate it in your life, uh, all the detailed information will be in the description box, how to contact me but it's very easy. I really encourage everyone to get on board and just try out an Ayurvedic lifestyle. Give it at least three weeks to a month and you will start seeing tangible results. And I hope you personally will um, see the value. The power lies in the practice. So please try it.